Hey guys, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani here. Today's video is going to be on the glycemic index versus the glycemic load and how your blood sugar can affect your hormones and affect you to lose weight or not. So let's dig in. But before we go in, first off, hit that subscribe button for me. Also next to the subscribe button, hit that bell. That's going to allow you to get notifications of all my new videos. I'll give you a second to do that here. All right, let's dig in. So first off, glycemic index. Glycemic index research many years ago was done by fasting various patients and then that next day after they broke their fast, they would give them one food item and they would see how rapidly their blood sugar would go up. The faster or the higher the glycemic index up to 100, which was pure glucose. That was kind of their 100 was pure glucose and then everything in between they ranked and gave various numbers to. 100 went into your bloodstream the fastest. Again, the faster certain foods go into your bloodstream, you have certain hormonal responses, insulin, etc. And you can also create hyper hypoglycemic episodes or reactive hypoglycemia. We'll talk about that later. So 100 is your highest, that's pure glucose. You have your veggies down below, like 10, 20, you know, 10, 20, 30 range, so to speak. You have your um, moderate foods right here. Let's go over the ranges. Our moderate foods are 56 to 69. Our low are less than 55. Our veggies are gonna be less than 20 and 10. Our berries will be in the 20s and 30s. And of course, our higher carbohydrate foods will be like our starches, et cetera, and our more, the more refined carbohydrate with added sugar. Okay, that's gonna be our glycemic index. I'll give you a little sneak preview. Glycemic index of carrots are 35. Bananas, a little bit higher. You can see watermelon, it goes up. You can see potato and corn and grains a little bit higher as well. So that's our glycemic index. Fasting patients, take a food, how high does that blood sugar go up? The problem with glycemic index is most people aren't fasting and eating just one food. There's a, a, other foods coming in, fiber, fats, proteins, all of these things would affect the glycemic index. So glycemic index is good just from a sense of how fast sugar gets into your blood and what that hormonal response may be, but not the best marker clinically. Glycemic load does a little bit better. Glycemic load takes the carbohydrate content in that food into effect. So let me give you case in point, right? What is glycemic load? Glycemic index, right? So it factors in glycemic index. It then takes the carbohydrate content and, and how many carbs are in it. So for instance, glycemic index of watermelon is 72. Okay, 72 is about six grams of carbohydrate in one serving of watermelon, because watermelon's a lot of water, right? So if we do 72 times about six, it's about 420, 430, and then we divide it by 100, that makes it about 4.2 or so. So you see here the glycemic load, watermelon's four. Okay, we round it down, keep it simple here. So you can see we have a high glycemic index, but because of the low carbohydrate amount per serving, we have a lower glycemic load. Okay, just to let you know, all vegetables are gonna be around one on the glycemic load, and they're about 10 or so on the glycemic index. So veggies are non-existent, they're at ones. Carrots, for instance. Carrots are at a 35, right? But then when you factor in glycemic load, you run it through the equation like we did here with watermelon, it's down to two. So Higher glycemic foods, you know, can also end up being lower because of the carbohydrate content is lower. So in general, how is glycemic load helpful? It gives us a window into total carbohydrates in that food. That's helpful if you're trying to be more on the ketogenic side of things, keep the carbohydrates below 50 or closer to 30, eating lower glycemic load foods are helpful. Sneak preview, almost all of the glycemic index foods that are lower and glycemic load foods that are lower almost always are gonna be vegetables on the carbohydrate side. And of course, maybe just a little bit of fruit may be okay. For instance, strawberries. Strawberries are 40 on the glycemic index, but one on the glycemic load because their carbohydrate content is very low per serving. All right, so differences, glycemic index, unrealistic, doesn't give us a good um, look at how the clinical world kind of meets um, from an application standpoint. But the load component really adds in the carbohydrate vibe to it. But the load even misses out as well. Why is that? Because this food typically is not gonna be eaten by itself in isolation. So even the glycemic load 
There's another kind of load to it when you eat protein and fat. They may even lessen, that may have a lower impact on the glycemic index. So now the glycemic index may be affected 50, 60% because now fats and proteins are in there, which then lowers the absorption of sugar. So now this formula here, maybe this glycemic index is instead of being 62 is now 30, right? Because we have more proteins and fats in there. So again, we want to look at how our food affects us functionally from like a real meal. Hey, this is what I sit down to at my plate to eat. Best way to do that is take your fasting blood sugar here. This could be your fasting blood sugar, fasting blood sugar. And then you can look at your blood sugar one, two, and three hours out. The goal is to have a nice gentle curve right here. This is gonna have lower glycemic index, lower glycemic load foods. What does that look like? Primarily vegetables, the right amount of fruit for you and your activity level, and the right amount of starch for you. And just so you know, starch is better at night because of insulin sensitivity reasons. So again, one, two, hour, three, the, the less we slope up, the less insulin we make, Okay, that's important. And the see how fast we go down? The faster we crash down, the more cortisol we typically make to bring that blood sugar back up. Because typically that blood sugar a lot of times can actually go too low. And then we're down into this hypoglycemic kind of state. Keep that in mind. So in general, Lower in, uh, we're basically, if we eat higher foods or higher carbohydrate foods, we're actually going to, I think I put decrease insulin. We're going to decrease insulin. Sorry, we're going to increase it when we go higher carbohydrate, higher blood sugar peaks. If we're down here and we're eating gentler so that sugar doesn't go up so high, then, then we are decreasing insulin. And the faster it comes down, the more we increase cortisol. So in general, the faster that blood sugar goes up, what must go up must come down. The faster and the higher it goes, the, fat, the, you know, the lower and the faster it goes down. So we increase the insulin as well. And then we, the faster it goes down, we increase the cortisol to help pull it back up. And this puts stress on our hormones. Higher insulin in females, increased chance of PCOS and polycystic ovarian syndrome. The more our blood sugar uh, goes up and down, the increased chance of taking progesterone downstream to make more of this cortisol, all right? And then of course in men, the more insulin we make, the more aromatase enzyme we make, which then we convert our testosterone to estrogen. More estrogen equals more fat, more fat, is gonna equal more leptin resistance and it's harder to actually feel satiated after our meals when that happens. So in general, what's the take home? Glycemic index versus glycemic load, you got it. You know how we calculate it. You know how glycemic index kind of started. You know where its shortcomings are. Most of the paleo foods that we're talking about are gonna be a low glycemic index and low glycemic load, maybe minus carrots and some of these oddballs here. But take a look, look at pasta, look at potato, look at corn. Glycemic index is you know, 50, 50 would be, let's see here, lower, right? Lower on the glycemic index for pasta, but high on the load, right? The load is less, 20 or higher is considered high. So pasta is actually considered a high glycemic load because of the carbs. So again, less than 55 is low for our GI, 56 to 69 for glycemic index is medium greater than 70 is high, and you can see the load is less than 10, where our veggies live primarily, and some of our low sugar fruits. 10 to 20 is medium, and greater than 20 is high. So you can see our pasta and potatoes are very carbohydrate rich, and those are gonna stimulate a decent bit of insulin there, so keep that in mind. So again, you know where your glycemic index and load foods are, you have an idea, you know what it's doing to your hormones. And again, if you have other hormonal issues, you're trying to lose weight, you're trying to get your hormones back in check, Getting your blood sugar in check is so important. Understanding this helps connect the dots. And if you wanna dig in deeper, click below to schedule a consult with myself or my colleagues and subscribe for more great content coming your way. Again, this is Dr. J signing off. Have an awesome night. Thanks.